Hello and welcome to TopCasts and my next in the series of questions for David. This is number nine about the nature of mind and personhood to some extent and what makes people unique. This is a real interest of mine. I made a video called The Nexus, which was an exploration of what I think we know from various angles about what the nature of personhood is. Certainly it's the case that we are these creative entities and because of computational universality, it must be the case that we can program computers to be creative, but whatever this program is, is going to be very different to any existing program. And David's going to touch on that in his answer today. But this program remains utterly elusive. We do not know how it is that we generate explanations, or in shorthand, how it is that we're creative. In my Nexus video, I hypothesized that personal identity might come into this in some way because there is this, some not entirely a mystery in the, to the same degree, but certainly it is a spectacular insight into the nature of reality that particles and indeed all large complex objects, including ourselves, have fungible instances in other universes which differentiate over time. And so this has a real effect on how we should view the nature of personhood given the truth of the Everett interpretation, the multiverse vision of quantum theory. And so because we know that we have these fungible instances that interfere, that differentiate sometimes, can differentiate sometimes, that perhaps there's something to be said here for the interaction between physics at that level and whatever the computation is that's going on in our minds. I don't know. It's pure speculation. But see my Nexus video for that. What I really loved about this question to David, or rather the answer from David, I should say, is that he talks about consistency and whether or not and to what extent people can be consistent. Should we strive for consistency? I suppose so. But can we? Could this inconsistency that exists in our minds, this constant state of problems, these contradictions that we live with, could this just be part of the reason why we are special, unique, different to everything else that exists that we know of. We are the thing that brings other things into being that otherwise would not have come into being if it was just laws of physics mandating everything in a deterministic way. Those laws do mandate things in a deterministic way, but they're not the only things that determine stuff and what happens, nor, of course, most importantly, are the laws of physics the best explanation for everything that happens at all moments in time. There is something absolutely unique about human beings. We continue to explore this. We're not just on the continuum with other animals, just a slightly smarter example of the chimpanzee. I keep on hearing this. We are qualitatively different. Without further ado, let's get into the next question with David. Well, this all raises the fact that there is this creativity going on, this creation of concepts in order to try and come to better understand the world, yeah. that is the uniquely creative capacity of the human mind. And mind itself, how do you understand the nature of mind? I sometimes think of it as this abstraction. I think you've said this to me. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a funny kind of abstraction. It's an abstraction that itself needs to be instantiated in matter but also needs to be running. It can't just be like any other piece of knowledge which you can transmit from one place to another in different physical forms. And that's one way of understanding what knowledge is. It allows itself to continue to persist over time uh, and to get itself copied, to get itself replicated. But a mind, a human mind, this thing that is a enabling the creation of this knowledge, it itself it is an unusual kind of abstraction. How, how do you think of it at the moment? Yes, so it's an unusual kind of, of knowledge. So we have yet another classification. Uh, a, a mind is a kind, of, a kind of knowledge, you might say, but it, it's a kind of knowledge that doesn't only have to be instantiated, but as you have just said, it has to be running. Now, what does that mean? Running how fast? Mm. Running in what? Because mm. uh, running in the wrong kind of computer would make it gibberish mm. or in a kind of computer that has the wrong mapping to, to reality. We don't know how it works. We don't know how the mind... So the mind is characterized by creativity, 
I think we can go that far. At least the human mind is characterized by creativity, mm. but we don't know what creativity is. We don't know what the distinction is between a computer program that is running creatively and one that is not running creatively. Uh, one day we will know, but we don't know yet. I, I think also there are, uh, and again, minds, that minds exist is common sense, even though we don't know how they work or what specifically they are. So more recent ideas that maybe minds don't exist, that had to be invented too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it is not at all common sense and it doesn't at all follow from any good philosophy, but we don't know. And uh, one of the things I think that, that is a misconception that dates from a very long time ago is, is that a mind is like mostly consistent, that it consists of uh, the ideas in a mind are mostly consistent. And when they're inconsistent, that's a kind of emergency. And, and we have to fix that because we have, because that does, that, that means that it's not a proper mind really. Mm. Uh, it it's, it's, uh, contains inconsistencies rather, uh, and th therefore that's no different from uh, a load of propositions written down on a piece of paper. I don't think that's true at all. I, I, I think a, a better way to think of the mind is as a set of problems, and a problem consists of conflicting theories. So, uh, or, or rather, a, a problem is, is more like some conflicting theories that we have noticed because um, we, we don't really think of something as a problem unless it's giving rise to some thought. So, uh, uh, but, but there must be ideas that are conflicting with each other before we have noticed it. And so the mind, I, I think of it as sort of mass of tangled uh, ideas which are largely inconsistent the parts of it which we have sorted out into a kind of consistency are a minority that are currently not uh, giving rise to any thought. They, they might be invoked in some thought that's about some other inconsistency, but the, the part of the mind that is thinking is full of inconsistency. And so, therefore, a model of the mind that thinks of the mind as a set of consistent propositions with occasional inconsistencies that we then fix it, it is uh, I, I, I think very far from the truth it's it's not a set of consistent ideas and it's not a set of propositions because propositions have a definite truth value they each proposition is either true or false and it has a perfectly definite meaning if it has a meaning uh, whereas the ideas in minds don't have a definite meaning and they're not precisely true or false. We can make them have as sharp a meaning as our current problem situation requires. That's what we should be aiming for. And we can make them as consistent as the current problem situation requires. And we're striving, you talked earlier about, about uh, truth, we're striving to make them as true as the current problem situation requires. Yes, so it sounds that whatever the nature of the mind is in a computational sense has to be radically different to any other kind of program that we've hitherto encountered because all those other programs are written in such a way that it's proposition after proposition, perhaps one following from another. It's an algorithm yeah. of a kind. And yeah. these statements need to be consistent or the computer program itself isn't going to run. But you're saying that it's possibly the case that underlying this uniquely creative capacity of the human mind is something that is quite the mirror image of that in, in at least some respects. Um, and maybe this is this is what is needed in order to uh, go some way to explaining what's going on here with um, uh, creativity. Or another way uh, that you've put that in the beginning of infinity is, of course, um, explanatory universality. Uh, this idea that uh, even if there were other kinds of creativity prior to us, what we have is a kind of creativity which allows us to 
create knowledge which is going to be able to solve problems in principle about anything that exists in the physical universe. 